Honda greatness. Engage, inspire, motivate, and empower millions of children every day. Supporting you, the adult, to unlock your child's full potential so that they can achieve greatness at home, school, and in life. Your child can achieve greatness. What is greatness? What is your child's full potential? There's only one way to find out. It's okay to not follow the crowd. It's okay to be different. Who cares what others think? You only have one life. Live it. Do what others refuse to do. Making a positive difference to children's lives every day. Hello, hello, Kieran here, the founder of Funder. Good morning to all our Funder loving family, children, parents, teachers, and hundreds of schools across the Northwest and UK. I'm so delighted because this morning we've got a really special guest to come onto the show. It's our launch show. I've got a fantastic presentation to go through uh, with my cousin, Mark Pugh, who's thankfully, thanks to him, coming on the show this morning. And pretty much if you're live, then say hello, get involved, ask any questions you want, prepare your questions to ask Mark on the live Q&A at the end of this live stream and podcast. I will be inviting Mark onto the show in the next couple of minutes, and he's going to be uh, getting involved. He's going to be pretty much uh, answering all our questions. I'm so excited. And if you're a parent out there and, and you've got a budding uh, young footballer, or you've got a child who wants to become a professional footballer, then this show is for you. If you want your child to unlock their full potential and achieve greatness, then this show is for you. We'll be unlocking what it becomes to become the ultimate athlete, a superstar, a TV star, a celebrity, an entrepreneur. You've got to have the right mindset, the right physical, psychological state. You've got to be the best you can possibly be. And we will be asking Mark lots of questions, sharing childhood memories. I'm so excited and I can't wait to go through the presentation with you. So if you're alive now, hello, hello, hello. I want you just to say hello because it's nice and it's good values to always greet people and say pretty much hello. So if you're alive, I just want you to comment below this video, say hello. I can I can flash your comments up and uh, Hi, James Hamer. Hi, Donna Love. Hi, Tracy. Hi, everybody. Um, ben Buckley, James, nice to see you all. And pretty much because some people are working, the main thing is they'll be able to watch this show back live from their own home, on demand, anywhere, anytime. There'll be a podcast coming up of this show. And pretty much it's the first Funder Greatness podcast show on how to unlock your child's full potential so that they can achieve greatness. So without further ado, I'm going to start my presentation and I want to just check my, my settings that you all can see the presentation that I've got for you here. And comment yes below if you can see this presentation. I hope you can. And um, I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. And that's it. So we're good to go. I'm so excited. The launch of our Fund of Greatness podcast and episode live show. Thanks for joining us. I'm not bothered if we have one person or 50,000 people. It's about making a positive difference to one person today. And that's why Mark's joining me on this live show, because he wants to make a positive difference. We're giving up 60 minutes of our time, and I'm going to be peeling away the onion skin of Mark Pugh. I'm going to be digging deeper. I'm going to be I'm allowed because I'm his cousin. I'm not going to stitch him up. I'm not going to get him into trouble, but I'm allowed because I'm his cousin. So I'm pretty much there. So I'll move the hello and you all can see everything now and we're going to get started. I can talk for England, but I love that and I'm just myself and so is Mark and that's why he's on this show. So I'm Kieran. I'm the founder of Funder. I have no hair because I work with children every day. And we get children active across the UK, thousands of children. We partner over 100 schools. We're Ofsted registered, multi-award winning and officially recognised by the Queen. And Funder is all about getting children active and developing that physical literacy 
So that long term, they're active for life. And that's what Mark is. If you look at his Instagram, the foodie footballer, if you look at his bio, Mark's active, his whole family's active. And that's what it's all about, physical literacy. So what are you grateful for today? It's always good to start your day off with what are you grateful for today? So before I bring Mark onto the show, I want you to pretty much think about what are you grateful for today? So I'm grateful for my family. You are my rock. Without my family, without my partner Rachel and my two boys, I wouldn't be sat here today. And I'm sure that many successful people and many entrepreneurs, business people and athletes like Mark wouldn't be sat where we are today without our family because they are everything. And thank you to our Funder loving children and families for taking part in Funder Greatness, getting active in your own front room. And I'm sure that um, all our team is going to be giving you thumbs up. And thanks so much for taking part. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, we just had Maddie, who now plays for England, Liverpool. She started with Funder at the age of four. And she's just been on BBC Fruit Shoot advert as well, which is awesome. Um, but I must give a big special mention and thanks to the NHS heroes um, sending our hearts. It's the clapped Thursday today, so we should be clapping tonight for the NHS heroes. And this is just, my heart goes out to you guys and um, you're keeping the country moving. So without you guys, we wouldn't be here. So thanks to our teachers, thanks to our children, and we're going to pretty much move on. So the start of our podcast. Here goes. We're going to focus on the inspiration, the focus, the concentration, the problem solving, the progress, the manners, the creative thinking, all the great attributes that it takes to become an ultimate athlete and professional. So all these questions will be geared around these out outcomes. And this is what's in it for your child, for you parents, to really focus on what type of health does your child need to have or we need to have. What focus do we need to have to become a professional footballer, perhaps? What mindset do we have to have? So I'll be asking questions to Mark, and hopefully this will be a learning lesson for your children at home. So Mark Pugh, the professional footballer, absolute, I've followed him now for years. I'm a busy guy. I don't see much of him. I've watched him on telly. We text now and again. We stay in touch. Um, and I'll be digging deeper today with Mark Pugh, the foodie footballer, who has just nearly nearly 10,000 followers on Instagram. So if you're watching this and you're not following him, please follow him because there's lots of good nutritional advice. He's passionate about all things health, fitness, nutrition, and sharing things he's learned along the way, hence why he's here today. Here's some of his food, some of his pictures. He now plays for QPR, doing a really good job, and he loves his pizzas, and he can make the healthiest pizzas, and they're called Pewis Pizzas. So he's there in the top right. So I'm going to introduce Mark. I'm going to play this little video of, of the build-up, and hopefully you can you can watch this and uh, the jobs are good. In. So let's have a look.
So here we go, Mark Pugh. I'm going to quickly introduce him now. The build-up's always good, isn't it, right? We've got to have a build-up. Come on. So, the small talk. Basically, Mark Pugh, I'm going to introduce you now to the podcast. I'm going to flash you up. Hi, Mark. How are you doing this morning? Morning, cuz. How are you? I'm all I'm good. Great, thanks. I'm good, good to see you. I'm, I'm delighted to see you. Good morning. And I, I'm sure that everybody live on this show uh, are grateful for you for coming on board this morning. And pretty much, we're going to start this morning. I'm going to take control for once. I'm going to pretty much ask you lots of questions. I'm going to, we're going to get to know you and we're going to spend some, some authentic time with you. We're just going to be ourselves. I've been up all night preparing this presentation and I hope that our audience gets great value from it of what it takes to unlock their child's full potential and achieve greatness. So thanks, Mark, for joining us this morning. Cuz. Absolute pleasure. I you're slept a, like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you will do. You, you're half asleep now because you're always relaxed. We were saying you're the most relaxed, calmest guy I've ever known in my entire life. You, you're so <laughs> relaxed. Um, but hence why you're a professional footballer as well. So the small talk. So that's the small talk. Have we got anything else to discuss? What have you been up to this morning? What's your daily routine, Mark? So this morning... I uh, we've obviously not training every day at the moment. I try and stay in a, a routine. I woke up at six o'clock, set my alarm for six. Um, I drove to the local playing field, done my run about quarter past six. And um, just basically this morning, um, a little bit of homeschooling, not too much because I was on here. A um, little coffee, a um, little shower. It's, it's just your general routine. I mean, um, you know, I'm... I'm the same as everyone else. Yeah, I play football, but I just I just love my life and just enjoy doing things with a smile on my face. Top man, Mark. And I noticed that I'm seeing you running a lot with the family. You're getting active. You're staying active during the lockdown. You're in lockdown yourself. I know that most professional football, well, all professional footballers and athletes and, and celebrities are in lockdown. Um, how are you finding that at the moment with your daily routine? Is that changing much? Um, you know what? Um, I think it's really helpful. Um, every evening uh, before I go to sleep, I write a plan what I want to do the following day. I write out my goals, uh, what I want to achieve. Um, I sort of plan out what I want to do. Every day you're not going to achieve and you're not going to, you know, do things that you've set in stone. But it's important to have that mindset that I want to attack the day in the right way. Um, and I'm just trying to stay in a routine as I normally do when I'm going to work. I try and get up at the same time and keep my body clock ticking over. And because sometimes I think you've probably done it before, you've had a line and you sometimes feel worse. So yeah. um, you, you feel like you need to sleep, but you have that line and you, you're a zombie for the rest of the day. So I'd encourage everyone to stay in a nice little routine, keep fit and healthy. And, um, you know, like say, yeah, my kids love to keep um, fit and healthy as well. I'll sometimes get back from my run at um, half seven, whatever it is, and then they'll be ready to go for another run. So then I've got to go out for another run. So uh, Bless but you. No, great. Uh, love my Bless kids you. to death, and it's really important that they stay healthy. That's brilliant. That's a really good value. And it's in, for, for all the children out there that are watching, picking up from Mark, then what he, what he just said, journaling your goals and your ideas – at, at night helps you sleep better as well. It also seeds them, I believe, in, at, the, at the front of mind in your in your uh, peripheral mind, in your in the front of your mind, so that you can you can visualize them goals and they actually become reality because thoughts become things. And I, I, I believe that Mark could vouch for that. And I believe that routine is really important, especially these homeschooling mums to get up in the morning. I know that some mums we've told them to actually tell the child to wear the uniform in the morning. So that they stick to that routine of putting on the uniform and we're in work mode, ready to homeschool. So that's great. Thanks for that, Mark. So your journey, I want you to share with the audience pretty much. And, and please, if I ask you any question, I must get a disclaimer in here, because if I ask any question in here and uh, you don't feel comfortable in answering this question, because I'm going to peel away the onion skin slowly, you're gonna, I'm going to see if I can actually make Mark Pugh sweat because he's the calmest guy ever. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to peel away, but I want to know your journey, Mark, from, from primary school in Rosendale Valley 
um, near Bakup, which is the last place God built, because I'm from there too. I want to know your journey from the very start in a brief little overview, please. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it's been one heck of a journey. I've I've loved every stage of it, every minute of it. Um, you know, I grew up, my my mum and dad absolutely love football, as you, you well know. Um, they, they basically drove all over the country for me to achieve my dream. Every kid, you you sit there and you think, oh, could I, could I? But you should change that mindset to, no, I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the best I can be. I'm going to be successful. And everyone dreams big. Everyone should dream big. They should want to achieve their dreams. Um, and as a young boy, I, um, I basically, I played in a, many teams with you. We played uh, for the schools. I played for a team called Michelin, a uh, Sunday league team. I uh, used to score a lot of goals in that team. That was, I was a striker back in the day, so that was good fun. Um, uh, we played for the Rosendale Academy um, together. Um, Andy Sasamovic, you remember him really well. Um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of good times. And that journey from... I just enjoyed football. When I was... I was playing Sunday League until I was 13, 14, just enjoying it. Um, you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself. If you're good enough... You're enjoying your football, then you can be successful with it. You've got to work hard. Um, working hard is such an important um, part of if you want to be successful. And I was playing the Sunday League game, and uh, Burnley wanted me to go for a trial. And um, I went uh, went for a trial, done really well, and they signed me. Um, and yeah, I was I was having a really good time, and um, I was at Burnley from 16 to 18. Yeah, um, there were some really good times. I scored a lot of goals, played some good football. Um, and it Stan Turner at the time, the manager, he really liked me as a player. Um, I was on the bench at 16 at Villa Park. Um, in um, I can't remember what the cup, Carling Cup, I think he was called back at the time. Um, yeah, and um, he really liked me. And in football, there's a lot of ups and downs, changing managers. We had a change of manager in the first team and um, Steve Cottrell came in and um, he didn't really think I was good enough. So, And looking back, it was a real blessing because it made me stronger as a character. He told me I wasn't good enough um, to, to play um, in the Championship, let alone the Premier League. Yep. So um, I got released, signed for Bury for a year. A um, lot of ups and downs. I played 40-plus league games. I uh, got kicked to death by the league to um, defenders because back in them days, they got away with a lot more than they do today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was nice. And, um, again, I, I took an opportunity to move to Shrewsbury. Um, I signed a three-year contract. It was a difficult decision moving away from home. Um, two really good years. And then, again, another change of manager. Um, got told it wasn't good enough. Got, uh, I was on my honeymoon with my wife at the time. I got released. I uh, told her I didn't have a job, which it's it just proves the importance of mindset because I could have either, you know, gone under at that point and just, you know, lacked the belief to push on and try and achieve greatness. Um, but no, I, um, I luckily I got a phone call off Hereford two days into my honeymoon, said that we'll give you a one year contract, and that year. I scored three goals, two in the home fixture and one in the the away fixture against Bournemouth. And they took a punt on me. Um, and the rest is history. I was there for uh, nine amazing years. And now I'm currently at QPR and I'm enjoying my football. Brilliant, cuz. Brilliant. Love it. So I've took from that story there and I'm going to share these little words of wisdom but what came out to me there was was you had to work really hard so children and parents who are watching this obviously we understand that work hard is a big topic you know anybody can work hard i, I, I work hard i can work myself into the ground when you love what you're doing the most um so really mark has had to work hard you were a burnley youth player from a young age i think he did his yt there and what i what what i'm not i've learned from mark is that he's played from the bottom leagues all the way to the top and played in the Premier League. Now, that is something special because I know that, Mark, I know back in the day when I'm, I, I had a chat with you, I think we were having a coffee, um, and I think you said 
some of these young players that that just make it just fast like that, they don't know they're born, perhaps, because they just get to the starlight so quick, reach the top. What do you think to that, Mark, about these these young players who are straight in and bang straight to the top? I think the game's changed an awful lot at the moment. And I think uh, financially, there's a lot more money in the game. Whereas, you know, when when you was uh, working your way up the league, you... Um, you needed to show that grit and determination because there wasn't a lot of money in 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 the in football when you're young and and basically the lower leagues it was there was a lot i mean when i was young we used to have to clean boots we used to have to put nets up when it was pouring down with rain um we used to you know we used to do a hell of a lot but the game's changed and for the good because um the young lads these days they you know they get treated a lot better which Rightly so, it should happen. It's just, um, it's just a mindset with everything. I think if you are with a Premier League club at the moment, um, you've never made it. You've always got the next day to improve and grow, grow as an individual. It's really important. You're always trying to, you know, achieve more. When I was in the Premier League, I never thought right, I've made it now because I wanted to stay there for as long as possible. I wanted to prove on a day-to-day -day basis that I was good enough and that I was better than whoever I was coming up against. And don't get me wrong, you you go out on a Saturday and you can have an absolute nightmare. You can be, <laughs> your touch can be all over. And, but you've just got to remain mentally strong and you've just got to... When, when you, you, know, you come under uncertainty or especially with social media these days, if people's giving you a bit of negative press or someone says negative com comments, just, just smile and think, right, that's fine, I'll prove you wrong. And that's what I live by. I mean, I try and prove people wrong. Uh, I love it when people say I'm not good enough because it happens all the time. Um, you just want to turn around and say, look, I'm working as hard as I can do and I'm doing the best I can do. Correct, Mark. Yes, and, and that is really important, especially with social media out there at the minute that children are growing up in. They've got mobile devices, interactive devices. You get a lot of uh, crawlers, a lot of haters, a lot of jealous people, a lot of rejection. So I believe that you having the growth mindset and obviously the mindset and belief is where you are today. So thanks for sharing that. And that's some golden nuggets for, for children out there. You might want to write that down, children, if you're listening, to have the ultimate growth mindset um, and, and to get over haters and rejection, these, these, these school bullies, if we want to call them. Tell a teacher about the bullies, get over it, ignore them, you're better than them and pretty much uh, overcome it and, and have that belief that you uh, are possible to achieve anything you want if you put your mind to it. So we're going to move on. So thanks for sharing your, your story, Mark. I hope this is useful, everybody, everybody out there watching. Uh, I wish I was a, a young boy again and I'm sure we'll get to that in a sec, cuz. Um, but yeah, all good. So I'm going to peel back the onion skin. Let's go. This is where the show gets really interactive. It gets fun because it's funder. It's going to be all about good values. It's going to be kind. It's not going to be silly or swearing or joking. It's about having good values. So I'm going to peel away this onion skin. And this onion remind me of Mark um, when he was playing <laughs> against Manchester United at Old Trafford. He was, he was on the big stage, and I'll get to that soon. And I was so pleased for him. I went to watch that game, actually, with my cousin Drew, who flew over from Australia. And uh, we see Mark after the game. But I want to know your biggest... We want to know, Mark, and be honest with us, transparency and authentic. What has been your biggest struggle to date? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, the biggest struggle to date? Um, I'll have to have a little think about this. Good, good question. You know what? I've... <laughs> I've been I've been really blessed with an amazing life. I've got a wonderful family. Um, my my wife Laura, she does endless amounts for me. My kids are amazing. Uh, the biggest struggle was probably when um, looking back now, it was a bit of a blessing to be honest. I mean, I was I was playing really well. Um, I was uh, I was in my second season with Bournemouth. No, my first season actually. It seems that long ago now. And I slid off the pitch, and basically, um, I went over a raised sprinkler and sliced my knee. I could I, I looked down at my knee, and I could see the bone, which was a bit. It was horrible. I was on like thirteen goals by Christmas at the time, and I was playing really well. 
um, and there was a lot of clubs interested in me. Um, I was just on top of the world at the time and I hit a bit of a low, to be honest, because I couldn't get out and do what I wanted to do. Um, and being injured as a footballer is really difficult and it's mentally challenging, but that's where the mentality comes in again. You get injured, it's a great opportunity to yeah. come back stronger. Um, and, you know, that was really difficult because I thought, oh, I'm going to get a move here and stop. I'm going to get a move because I'm doing really well. But um, it was a blessing because I wouldn't have had the most incredible journey ever with Bournemouth mm -hmm. if I'd have maybe jumped the gun and maybe, oh, what if I could get into the championship with a, with a bigger club? But it's not always the best way. You should, you know, I was loving my football, love Bournemouth, love the fans, love everything about the place. So why should I move? I should keep playing football because I'm enjoying it. Um, having fun. I've got some amazing friends. Um, I'm settled. My family loves it in Bournemouth. This was before my kids um, kids arrived, but um, it was a struggle. But looking back, it was a blessing as well. Um, this, you know, I, I can think of hundreds of struggles because there's so many ups and downs in football. And but yeah, that I think injury in football is a, a struggle. So touch wood, touch my wood, touch wood, that Mark <laughs> has a good end to his uh, season with QPR. If we get back playing with COVID, uh, by the way, uh, we hope so, because I think everybody's missing football. The children are in schools, the parents are, uh, so that's really important. Um, so, yeah, so that's cool. So we'll move on, um, and this is pretty useful. So your top tips for parents. So before, I, before you go into this, Mark, I want you to... Uh, see, I won't name names, but I know your mum and I know your dad. Your dad's a calm character. He's relaxed. My uncle and my auntie. Um, you, you, your mum's 100 mile an hour, like me. Your dad's more calm, <laughs> like you. And your mum was a busy parent, rushing around here, driving us everywhere, even driving me everywhere. Um, when it, we were at grassroots level, we played for Rosendale Juniors, Waterfoot, Michelin. We used to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Rosendale Academy on the on the Friday night, two hours training. It was ridiculous. But I want to I want you to share with our parents and kids out there because they've all got their pens and pencils ready. And people who watch this show back, because that's what will happen. We'll have children because we'll share this in all our schools when we go back as a as a growth mindset learning lesson and 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 really important for PSHE in schools. The top tips for parents out there that you think is really important, Mark. Now you're a parent yourself. Yeah, I mean, um, like you said, our parents did everything for us. They run us everywhere and uh, we're so grateful for that. I mean, top tips, love your children. Just encourage them for anything they want to do. Just introduce them to different sports, see what they love. Um, I mean, don't say, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Just let them grow and let them, you know let them inspire you as a person because every day I go to bed and I think back, I was like, right, did my children have a good day? Did they have smiles on their faces? And I think if they're enjoying something, then they're going to, they're going to aspire to great things. Just trying with different things. And if, um, if they, if they love something, just encourage them to do that. And who knows, they could be a ballerina, they could be a footballer, they could be a, a doctor, just, it's, it's important to just let them be and um, play with a smile on the face. I think that's the biggest, and just do everything you need to do to try and help them to reach their full potential. Love it, because love it, absolute, this is great stuff for our parents out there. Me being a parent myself, I mean, my little boy, Theo, I took him to rugby, and then I started taking him to football because Obviously, I got him a Manchester United kit because we play United. We, we love United, me and Mark. We grew up on United. I've got some stories to share with you in a minute. But it's important. My, my boy, he's tried gymnastics. He's tried. It's important to give your child that active start, the ultimate active start, which is important for long-term athletic development. So I want to step in there as a, as a coach, as a teacher as well. So it's great to have Mark's athletic professional opinion because he's been there and done it, but also the... The lessons from from the education side is is to give your child the active start. Link your your learning to stories, to games, to music, to themes, dinosaurs, monkeys, you know, zebras, 
and, and really take your children on a magical, physical, story-based journey so that they love being active. Because, Mark, this, this question really is about these academy players now. I, I, I know I've, I've been down to, to Burnley FC where you've, uh, where, where you've played in the past. They've got a new training facility. I've been to Manchester City. I think I went with Andy Sass to Manchester City. I had a look around Man City at the head of recruitment. And I've noticed, they said to me, Kieran, you know what? Um, if, when you're in school, send me, a, send me all the players that can run 100 metres in five, five seconds flat, boom, and, and send me the boys who look athletic, send me the boys. But then when you look at, look at all these parents who are going from club to club, taking the child round from club to club, what tips would you give these parents now who, 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 who are literally get, getting a picture of them? Because this, this is my pet here. I'm only being honest. This is my opinion of where they get their child at the age of five to sit behind a desk, to sign a piece of paper, to say to everybody that my child signed for X club. What mm. tips would you give to those egotistic parents? It's, it's, it's become a bit... It's crazy now how the football world's gone. I mean, it's really difficult. I mean, I've known um, nine-year-olds that have been given an iPad to take home um, to analyse their own performance on a Saturday and Sunday, and it's ridiculous now. <laughs> Just as I said earlier, I just think like we as parents should just let our kids enjoy football. If they're good enough, they'll get spotted. They'll, you know, there'll be someone watching. There's scouts all over at the moment looking for young talent. Um, and if you're good enough, you'll be a footballer as long as you work hard. You never stand still. You're always trying to improve, grow as a player. We used to get our footballs and just kick it against the wall for hours and enjoy. We, I mean, technology these days is mental. There's so much technology around in the world, whereas we never had any back in the day. We basically got on from school and we'd be out playing football till, well, nine, ten o'clock at, at night in the summer. And uh, you'd come in and your mums would be like, have you had your sun cream on? You've <laughs> <laughs> Red yeah. Roy, you're back in that. But, uh, no, we, I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's a crazy world. I'm, I mean... Um, yeah, just I just want kids to smile and enjoy things and not be forced into anything. And just if they're good enough, they'll get spotted, they'll get picked up. And good man. I've, I've known players, I've played with players, Jan Kermigan, great talent. He didn't sign a professional contract, his first professional contract, until he was 26 years old. And he proves never give up, just keep going and and that's the mentality that you need. You need to be positive. You need to just push yourself as a, as a person, as an individual in all aspects of life. And one of my, I don't know whether this is one of your questions that you was going to ask. It's all it. good. good. <laughs> Go one, on. of, one of my regrets when I was a little bit younger, maybe 20, 21, um, I didn't educate myself enough. And in the last two or three years, especially, I've educated myself so much more on different aspects, which is going to improve my game, um, my overall life, the health of my family. Um, so, yeah, just just smile, enjoy life. Good man, Mark. And, and I know that I've done a bit of research because I know at school I was, I was the boy, Mark, because you used to sit right next to me in class. We used to have them wooden tables with the little ink pots in. I know we sound like we're back in the day, you're really back in the day, but our primary school, you remember, we had a chalkboard at the front. I don't know if everybody remembers this, if, if you're a parent sat there right now, but we had, a, we had a chalkboard at the front of class where the teacher used to spin it round, dust used to go in your face. We used to sit there, <laughs> me and Mark, and we used to be looking outside, itching to play football at dinner. That's all we went to school for, to play yeah. football at dinner. We had them little ink pots where we used to roll our marbles into them. We used to hide our Hannah seed balls and our millions and thousands in the ink pot. We used to lift up the desk and keep all our swap stickers underneath, and we used to be swapping them. And I was a distractor in class. I was destructive. I was very active and hyperactive. Mark was very uh, like he's now. I, I'm bouncing about on this video. I'm, 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 my, my mind's wondering. And, and Mark's, like, focused. And Mark was the same academically. You were very talented, very gifted in maths. I used to get told to stand up into the times table and I couldn't do it. And I used to get sent to stand in the corner because I don't even remember, Mark, because I couldn't do my, my times tables. Mark used to stand up and rhyme them off his tip of his tongue. And my, my, what I'm trying to get to here is, is the, the, the main thing I'm trying to get to here is parent support. Because I, I rung up my auntie, Mark's mum, 
before this show and I did a bit of research. And the one thing that that my auntie kept Mark's mum kept telling me was Kieran, as a parent, you get tired. And all parents out there are with me. I work from in the morning from seven till so seven at night in my business funder. And other parents are doing key worker shifts, teachers. And by, by the time they get home, they're absolutely goosed, they're tired, they're shattered. I don't know if parents are listening to this or with me. You're thinking, now I've got to nip my child to training. I've got to take them ballet. I've got to take them dancing. I've got to take them to the after school show, whatever it is. Now, what I'm getting at, I know that my auntie, and especially my auntie and my uncle, they used to have a blue Vauxhall, uh, I think it was a, an Astra, one of the old cars. But we used to, that car did some serious, serious miles because your mum used to pick me up. She used to take Mark. And I remember one day we went to the to the Glen in Rosendale the, uh, to play a football match. And me and me, my dad and, and Mark's dad was in the car. And my dad lifted up the chair at the front, the, the slanted chairs that, that, that lift up. And he let it go and it, it banged on Mark's toe. Oh, I don't, I don't. Brent, it nearly chopped his toe off. He nearly we, chopped we, his we, toe off. Oh, we, um, that was horrible. Because um, it was a freezing cold day as well, weren't it? Freezing. And, uh, yeah, I, did, I got in the back and I put my foot up. And uh, the seat came back. And it was one of them reactions where you're like, did that just happen? And then you just scream as a kid. Like, oh. So, yeah, I had to have a tetanus jab because of that. That wasn't very nice. Um, because of the metal thing coming back on my toes. So, no, I, I was only speaking about that a few weeks ago, actually, with uh, with Laura. Um, yeah. But, no, that was – but, yeah, that car did some serious mileage. Parent was, uh, support. Without your mum's no, support, Mark, you, your parent support, you know. Yeah, 100%. My parents supported me for thick and thin. The, the great people, great people. So I'm going to skip on now because I don't want to talk around the bush. I'm good at doing that. Um, so pretty much, I, I hope you're enjoying this, Mark, and nothing's under cuff. I hope, uh, I promise to, to my Mrs. Rachel that I won't catch you out. Um, top tips for, for children then. So little children who are all listening now, uh, you're in front of the class, Mark. We've got a lot of our schools tuning in at the minute on YouTube uh, as well, YouTube Live. Um, and they're all watching this in class, actually, as we speak. So we've got like 10 schools watching it. So there's like, there's hundreds of children watching this and, and we see them every day. What tips would you give them? So you're speaking to them now, Mark, you know. Yeah, I mean, just be willing to learn and listen to your teachers because as you get older, you'll look back and realise that you should have done that little bit extra work and concentrate a little bit more and, I think in class it's really important as well. Um, I look back and I was a nightmare. Uh, as a kid, we used to we used to save money to just buy hundred sweets. You get hundred sweets for a pound. There were a penny of sweet back in the day, and uh, you used to go into classroom thinking, "Oh, I'm absolutely shattered here." But always remain focused. Um, I look back and yeah, I was I was decent with the times tables, and I worked hard in school. And like you said, you were a little bit disruptive, weren't you? But I was. Um, you know, it's um, you look back and you just wish you'd. Uh, everyone says school are the best years of your life, and it really. It, it, I mean, I, I'm living the dream at the minute. Absolutely love life, but <laughs> I did love my school life and spending every day with your friends, having a little bit of banter. Um, we used to have some cracking games in school, didn't we? I mean, uh, oh. We used to use the pencils. We used to sharpen the pencils really sharp. And we used to play bloody. We used to try and break each other's legs. You had one shot each. Yes, that was <laughs> um, um, But, yeah, it's um, just always be willing to learn, listen, be the best you can be. Um, and no one will ask anymore. It's okay to get things wrong. It's okay to, you know, to ask questions. If you're not sure on something, ask questions and That'll always help you. Good man, Mark. Good man. And, and I know there was one thing that I was better than you at at school. And that was racing to eat the school dinners. Because <laughs> them school dinners, we had chocolate puddings, jam roly-poly, chips, pizzas. We used to go for firsts. The bell went at dinner time. We used to race. Right, go. We used to get our dinner. We used to eat that. We used to have first, seconds, thirds and fourths of the puddings. And then go and play a football where we put our jumpers down. At, at playtime, how we got away with playing that game of football because it was like Wembley every single lunchtime, weren't it? 
<laughs> oh, it was crazy. We it was dangerous looking back in the day. I think we spoke about it the other day. We played cricket in the middle of the actual playground, and we used to be smashing like corkies when people <laughs> were running round and stuff. You you look back and you worry for people's lives. Can you imagine get, what, getting yeah. whacked from the head with one of them? But yeah, it was. Um, we used to literally just eat so much as a kid. You oh. look back and it's like, yeah, but you, we used to burn it off. You I think I eat it. more now though, Mark. I'm, I'm, I must admit, I'm not following your recipes, but I eat more now. <laughs> and Do you not remember when we used to, I know there's children watching now, so marbles have been banned in schools because I know that. But when I was back in school and, and I go on lunchtime play now at schools with the kiddies, we used to get these marbles, like the full giant ones. And we used to, from one side of the yard to the other side of the yard, to get it closer to the jack, what we used to call it, launching them. And how we got away with things. It was like Armageddon. I don't know. It was it was crazy, Mark. Uh, crazy, but yeah. yeah. So don't Good do that man. now, children. <laughs> don't do it now. Sorry. Don't do it now. I, I, I'm just being myself, really, um, and sharing. So, yeah. So, childhood memories, Mark. You go first. Here goes. You go first. Give me one. I, I don't know whether I should be saying this because I don't think my mum actually knows about this right now, uh, if she's watching. Um, so basically, um, do you remember when we used to go fishing um, up near Greens? Yep. So we used to go fishing. Do you remember when I fell in the lake? So yes. I fell in the lake. Um, I got absolutely drenched. I was covered from head to oh, toe yes. in mud. Yeah, yeah. It was the worst smell ever. So when I got home... Rather than admit to my mum, because she'd have gone mental that I fell in the lake, I literally stripped off outside, chucked yeah. all my clothes in the bin and run upstairs for a shower. Never knew. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. That that was awesome. And we were fishing on the on the, the lodges. And we, we used to, back as kids, we used to go on adventures. We used to build dens. We used to, we used to be in your backyard having a kickabout. Then we used to go down to the bottom of the wreck. And, and the people, your social interaction... Now today, the facts are, Mark, and I must get these in for our teachers, is that children spend more time inside than prison inmates. Yeah. That's scary. And the fact is children spend more time sitting and less time doing, playing on mobile devices, which we didn't have when we were younger, uh, which opens them up to all, all new uh, distractions and, and uh, you know, haters out there, so to speak. But yeah, that that's uh, that, that was a good memory. Now I've got some to share with with everybody, and 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 I'm going to see if I can make Mark Pugh, um, see if I can make him. Um, let's just see if I can get this screen right. Let's have a flick here, uh, just to see if we can see him sweat a little bit. See if we can make him go red. Um, <laughs> see, because because obviously he's been there and done it. So let me just get rid of this banner here, and uh, let's have a look at this. So here goes. Do you remember goals, 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 Mark, that we used to watch all the time? Oh, 101 of the greatest goals. 101 of the greatest goals. We used to sit there in your bedroom, and I remember Paul Lynch was your my favourite player. Who was your favourite player off goals, goals, goals? Uh, Giggsy, 100%. Giggsy. I remember, um, was it Anton, Anthony Yobo's goal over a kick on that one as well? Yes. Yeah, yes. but Giggsy on there, Giggsy was just different class one. He was my idol as a kid, just because the way he glided past people. But I think my mum and dad still probably still have that uh, video, to be honest. Still have it. Mark, we used to listen to it. And and what about this thing? So I'm going to speed up a little bit because I want to keep everybody in the audience engaged. Um, but remember this, what we used to play all the time. We used to play <laughs> EA hunt. Sports on, on, on SNES and Duck Hunt. Remember them games, Duck. Mark? Duck on, it had a gun with it, didn't it? You could shoot it with the actual gun. And uh, yeah, I remember them. They're great memories, actually. Great now, why I've put graphics this in, Mark, good. the graphics was awesome. <laughs> so, but what, why I've put this in for children? Because we have to be realistic. We have to be, in schools, we're saying no computers, no mobile devices. Let's be realistic. There's a time and a place to, to, to get competitive. Me and Mark used to spend hours out playing football, training, but then we used to get an orange juice. We used to go in Mark's bedroom. We used to spend an hour of quality time, me, Mark, and his brother playing these games, and it, and it, it brought that competitiveness out of us. Do you not think, Mark? Completely agree. You should always want to win with everything you do in life, and th this was brilliant. I mean, my, my kids love a little bit of iPad time, and they love a little game, and go on the Xbox, but 
get some exercise done, do some exercise in the morning, have a little bit of time and have a bit of banter, have a laugh. Because it was brilliant. It's great to, you know, want to win and be the best at everything. We wanted to be the best at everything at the end of the day. And uh, in, in schools, they sometimes say, oh, winning isn't everything. It is. Let's be honest. You want to yes. win. You want to. Uh, I'd say to my kids when it's sports, they're like, "Do you want to win this race?" So I, and they're like, "Yeah, we want to win." And um, it's just positive affirmation to yourself. Want to be the best and want to win. I, I really do think we should encourage our children to be winners. Yes, and I always say this to my boy, and I'm sure this is a quote that people seen on our Instagram. It: If you're not first, you are last, and that's a that's a fact, and that's what Mark's getting at. If you're not first, you were last, basically. So competitiveness, let's bring it back into schools because we were the most competitive ever, especially when it came to Duck Hunt and uh, these these games. So let's move on. Good so far, Mark? Yeah, perfect. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I must add to that as well. Um, if you do lose, then it's, it's not losing because it's an opportunity to grow and learn from what, went wrong and you yes. can improve yes. that aspect to win next time so i think losing is really refreshing as well and you can turn it around into a positive and think right where can i get better and where can i win next time look at that tips from the pro who's been there and done it that's awesome children note that down if you lose having that growth mindset and resilience to bounce back awesome so what about this one with oh. your teenage mutant Hero Turtles slippers on. What a game that was as well. That was a good game. <laughs> but what about don't just don't distract people from your slippers, Mark? What about Look the at them? <laughs> Honestly, I, I could climb them. Brilliant. And, and this this was what we was all about. We just we just didn't dress to impress. We had uh, we always good used job. to. Wear similar jumpers. We used to wear similar clothes, and and what a life! What an upbringing we had. Uh, just a general home life upbringing, full of mud, full of full of sweat, full of grit. What about this one? You like tractors, don't you, Mark? Oh my gosh, tractors! <laughs> yeah, I remember my uncle Greg. He used to work on a building site. He used to do building that kind of thing, and he let me drive one of the diggers. I was obsessed with them. So he let me drive one of the diggers. So he sat me in the front and uh, I didn't actually drive it. I thought I was driving. I was giving it all this. And I pulled one of the levers. I wasn't supposed to. And it broke the digger. So, oh. <laughs> so yeah, that was a good memory. But, yeah, I love tractors. That okay. Is mental. What about this one, Mark? In, in nursery. I think I, I was looking at a girl. And I think, <laughs> I think you was looking at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises there then. Oh, what what days we used to we used to pedal around that playground on bikes for hours up on end. What about this one? Primary school football team. Some good friends there. Um, oh, we've got Daniel Coleman. I think Daniel you Coleman's on this show. Go on, go on. Sorry, Danny Coleman actually sent this picture through to me on Instagram about ten days ago, actually. And yeah, uh, yeah I tell you what, I was a dwarf. <laughs> Some big Sorry, Mark. I had to get these in. I had to get these in. Sorry if it's. Uh... But anyway, yeah. Manchester United. This was your backyard. This is where you learnt your skills. This is where you learnt your trade. This is where we grew up in your backyard. Football till it went dark, and we didn't have much. We just had a football. You had uh, Paul Gascoigne's tracksuit on, and yeah, we used to uh, we used to go for it. Do you remember them days, Mark? Wow, remember that tracksuit. Uh, my mum and dad could have got uh, a tracksuit that actually fit, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but no, we, I remember them days. I mean, um, the amount of times my dad had to fix them fencing panels because we'd smashed them to pieces. We're kicking a ball at it. Uh, it was ridiculous. But no, some great times. And uh, Poor, and, yeah, poor uncle. Spend yeah. hours there. Poor dad, Mark, because he used to be fixing them. I do remember that now. We used to blast it with a leather case. It used to, used to knock them off. So speaking about Manchester United, the children will love this one. I got this picture, you playing against Wayne Rooney, Mark. And I want you to really uh, speak from your heart here now and share with our children, our parents, our young budding footballers who are dreaming and destined to be a professional footballer. 
of you on the theatre of dreams, you playing against Wayne Rooney. I think you did a Cruyff turn there. You turned him inside out. And what is it like playing on the, our childhood dream football team? Tell us, Mark. We need to know. What's it feel really, like? Really special memories. I mean, to walk out in front of that crowd, 60 plus thousand, it was, it was amazing because we used to watch United as, as kids all the time. We, they were our idols. And to play against the best in the world, that's what you want to strive towards. You, you want to play. I always said to myself, I say to myself every day in the mirror, even to this day, I want to be playing against world-class players. And even though I'm in the championship at the moment with QPR, I still believe that I've got the ability and the potential to play back in the Premier League again and test myself against the best in the world. But what an amazing achievement. And, you know, it's come from a lot of hard work and I'm just proud of myself and, you know, I couldn't have done it without my special family around me because they've always encouraged me. They've always encouraged me to show the belief in myself because they believed in me. Um, but to play at Old Trafford again, um, mm -hmm. it still gives me, um, you know, goose pimples now thinking back. Mark, I was so, so, so jealous. But on <laughs> the other hand, I was absolutely so pleased for you because we we were sat in the crowd me and me and our cousin drew and the, we don't see much of drew and actually watching your cousin who you played against as a young boy and you watched him progress on to develop his skills in the academy at burnley and he, you could see your progress you were starting to grow above everybody else you were starting to score more goals and then to to play on old trafford mark in front of all them fans uh, against Valencia as well, uh, against against players like Valencia, um, I think it is, um, with Mourinho in the background. And Mark, honestly, God, I was so pleased. But but what's it feel like in your heart for these young children who want to be a pro footballer or want to be anything and they can feel that burning sensation in their heart? Because I've been there, but to actually play there, is it surreal? You feel, when you're a kid, you feel like it's an absolute million miles away. You just think like, oh, it's you know because it's it's really difficult to explain because as kids we kicked a ball around and they were our idols we just wanted to be like them and you go to big stadiums like old trafford watching everyone and you think to yourself can i actually do this can i can i do it and yeah anybody can we were normal kids we used to run around with baggy trousers on and baggy track suits as you saw in the pictures and um we were just normal kids but at the end of the day any anyone can achieve anything just dream big follow your dream and tell yourself yes i am good enough because um i want this so much and i want it for myself and for my family that's awesome mark that's awesome and when you're on that pitch right because i bite my nails really bad and i think you remember and and, and I, 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 I still bite them my, my nerves i were nervous before this show i've been up all night mark i've been up all night <laughs> I've been planning, I've been preparing. I hope this is useful content for people who are watching it now and watching it back because it's about inspiring children to unlock your full potential and achieve greatness. But, Mark, when we talk about preparation, when we talk about discipline, I remember we had a trial, I think it were regional trials for England at the Cliff in Manchester. And we, we were, yeah. and, and it was our chance to shine. It was our chance to, to, to and I think that's where you got scouted for Burnley. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And and we we turned up and that's all we ever trained for at high school. We were building up to the peak of of are we going to make it or are we not? We was out running every day. We was out eating healthy. We was out training. You know, football is all we ever wanted to do, Mark. But what I'm trying to get to is that for a ch child or for a young budding footballer that's watching this right now, I used to struggle with my nerves before that cliff. I used to bite my nails before the the, the, the trial at the cliff. What were you like and how do you prepare before you step out on that pitch and have Mourinho staring down your neck? Um, I think, as you know, I'm quite a chilled character anyway. Um, you know, positive self-talk has always helped me. I visualise a lot. I visualise what I'm going to do well and how I'm going to just visualise that, visualize that feeling of scoring a goal and what you're going to do well. Don't bring negative comments into your head. Don't say, oh... <laughs> 
not sure about this. Just just be confident in what you're going to do. And if you show confidence, you, you show that willingness to learn and develop as a player, you're going to do well. And yeah, I mean, nerves in a big situation. I mean, it's difficult to teach that. It's just, it comes within. You've just got to know you're a good player, know you're good at what you do and just express yourself. Go out, express yourself, play with a smile on your face and You've got to live in the moment. I mean, I lived in the moment that day. I think I scored two goals and um, I was just basically, I was waiting for the letter to come through the post and I was expecting it. I was like, so when's the letter going to come? I think expecting to do well is more beneficial than, oh, I'm not really sure what's happening. So be positive in everything you do would be my, um, you know, key message to everyone. Awesome. Awesome, because it's uh, it's brilliant stuff, is this? Now, I, I've been meaning to ask you them questions because I love United and I'm all for United. But uh, anyway, let's move on from football. What would you do differently? So if you if you were to turn the clock back, Mark, what would you do differently? Yeah, I think I briefly touched on it um, earlier. I think I'd, I'd try and educate myself a lot more. I mean, in school, yeah, I was good. I was... You know, I, I, I was good. I was decent with maths, that kind of thing. But I used to switch off a little bit, probably because I was visualising about football, to be honest, and just, like you said, going out, kicking the ball, because that's all I ever wanted to do. But I think I'd, if I'd have concentrated more in school and from the ages of maybe 16 to 21, I, I'd have educated myself a little bit more like I do to this day on foods I should be eating to improve my game, um, you know, recovery strategies for football and for general day life. And it, it's really, really important because you can improve in all aspects of your life if you, if you do that. Yeah. So, yeah, that bit, that that is probably one of my biggest regrets. I should have just paid more attention to the small details. Good man, Mark. Education. And it's important. I know that people are saying, like, when, when am I going to find time to learn? When am I? Because I know that you've done a nutritional course on top of being a professional footballer. So you're a nutritional guru. You love food. Um, education is so powerful. Martin Luther King, it can change the world, is a good quote. But also with education, I mean, I read one book a, a, a week, 52 books a year. And pretty much I listen to them on Audible through me in, in my truck. I don't listen to the radio because it's full of negativity. Do you listen to, to audible books, Mark? Do you, do you learn all the time? Yeah, with me doing the two-hour commute to work, um, well, when the isolation, before the isolation, um, yeah, two, I had two hours there and two hours back, four hours to burn. So Audible is a great way. Audible podcasts, I listen to loads. I mean, there's some great uh, fitness podcasts, nutrition podcasts. Um, I've listened to some brilliant books. Um, you know, James Smith was a good good watch it's not for everyone because there is quite a bit of swearing in it so i wouldn't recommend that one for the kids to be honest um and yeah i've, I've listened to, to various books and it's a great way if you're not into reading audible um you can listen to someone reading it for you so yep. i'd highly recommend it and there's some amazing books out there um i think uh, one of my favorites was uh, anthony robbins um all about the mindset and the mental side of sport. I think it would help people who, who want to be the best version of themselves. Awesome, cuz. Awesome. Right, here we go. So that we're nearly, we're nearly done, then we're going to take some questions from our live audience. They're, they're tuning in from all over, Mark, which is very pleasing to, 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 to know. Um, but pretty much, I just want to share. Let me just uh, get the presentation back up. Let's do, I've got one or two more. What's your guilty pleasure? And keep it oh, uh, keep it uh, authentic and real, Mark. Nothing rude, please. <laughs> yeah, I will do. I know these children watching. Uh, to be honest, as you know from back in our school days, I really love like a sweet dessert with custard. Um, I love apple crumble, love jam roly poly, and if that's one of my little naughty meals, I'd have one of them after a Sunday roast. Um, I'm in the process of trying to come up with a really nice, healthy uh, apple crumble porridge. So keep your eyes peeled for that one on my page. Love it. I want it. I, I definitely <laughs> want it. 
So what do you need to start doing? We, we, we'll zip, zip through these now very quickly. What do you need to start doing? When? Uh, whenever, t today, <laughs> now. What, oh, what today, you, today. In, in your right, life. So... <laughs> um, no, yeah, today um, I've got lots of content to catch up on, play with the kids. Um, I'm sure I've uh, got a few games uh, to play and a little bit more homeschooling as well. Me and uh, the wife's done a little bit this morning. Good man. And uh, what do you need to change? Anything? Um, I just need to look to the positive side of everything. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm doing everything in my power to be the best version of myself. Um, you know, just keeping that routine and keep that positive mindset. Top man. What is greatness to you? Greatness is someone who is relentless and willing to you know, pursue the dream and never stop growing as an, indi as an individual. Top, man. This is awesome. Off the cuff. Look at that. He hadn't even stuttered. That's how calm he is. Could win, he could win the chase, this guy. <laughs> what's next for you, then? The foodie footballer. Hashtag the... What's next for you, cuz? Uh, well, my main priority at the moment is my football. I, I, you know, I'm doing everything in my power to go back fit once this isolation process is out the way. I'm going to go back fitter than when I... Uh, when it started um and then yeah i'm loving my foodie footballer page it's uh it's in it seems to be inspiring people um i want to help people be the healthiest version of themselves i want to give people you know the information they need on whether it be from a simple dish to recovery strategy strategies to, um you know helping them achieve their goals so yeah um i think um i've got a book that i'm working on at the moment it's not quite there it won't be there for you know i'm not sure how long yet i just want to grow my following i want people to be inspired and uh we'll see where that goes top man and i'm, I'm excited for your book i will be definitely re definitely reading it and trying to get in shape from it as well i hope there's lots of uh, exercise routines and, and diet in there for really busy people like parents and like myself who runs a business because I really struggle to to eat through, through, through the day so I need to start doing that uh, but pretty much we're going to go now to a, to a live Q&A with all our, uh, all our people Mark, all our live audience and I want to people to comment below if this has been helpful I want teachers to ask their questions from their children. We've just been roughly 60 minutes now, so it's perfect. It's one hour. We're not going to go over it around now. We're just going to answer some questions and then wrap this, this fund of greatness first show up. And, and thanks to everybody. Thanks to Zoe. Thanks to uh, James Hamer. Thanks to uh, Zoe, Sally, Steve, everyone on here. Uh, I've got some questions. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin these up. Um, so let me just, uh, da, 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 da. here's a school look. We've got a school here who's tuning in. Hi, Kieran and Mark, Oxford Grove tuning in. Say hello to Oxford Grove, Mark. Hello, Oxford Grove. How are you? <laughs> They're all watching there. This is all good. This is all good. And so we've got, uh, keep going. I don't want to know. Uh, watching also. Uh, Lucas is watching. So James, little Lucas, got Lucas watching. Hi, Lucas. You okay, mate? Good. Just some little shout outs. So, and I'm going to start with some questions. Um, go, we still play. Let me just find some. I'm just going down the stream. Apologies if this is the longest one ever. Does Mark <laughs> have any aspirations to get involved in coaching? Let's answer that one first. Do you have any aspirations to get involved in coaching, Mark? Good question. It's not on my priority list at the moment. I'd never say never. I want something that I'm passionate about. And at the moment, uh, football is my main priority. I feel like I've loads left in the tank yet. I feel as fit as I ever have. Um, so not at the moment. Um, I've got a real passion for food, nutrition and fitness. That's my passion besides football. So not at the moment is the answer to that one. Yes, that's all good. That's all good. And let's see these questions here. Well, this is a nice one from Zoe Making. Uh, Sam, a child called Sam from Oxford Grove, whoop, whoop, would like to know what is the toughest match you have played in your professional career, Mark? Toughest match? Um, yeah, it'd be Liverpool away at Anfield. Um, we got absolutely battered. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, it was probably three, year, three four years ago now. Uh, Mo Salah was 
it was the season when he was on flame, scoring goals for fun for Mino and Mane. Um, they were on fire and they just kept the ball for fun. We worked hard. Actually, the City one away weren't too easy either. So I'd say them two, yeah, they were really tough because I think in the City game, I came on a substitute after seven minutes because one of our lads got injured um, and I did 13 and a half K that, okay, wow. that day. And I can't remember touching the ball, to be honest. 13 and a half K. So for, for Sam who's watching, that means roughly uh, Mark ran around about 11 miles running in a football match. How cool is that? And by the way, Sam, for all your class asking these questions, I love doing this, Mark. I'm going to give Sam 50 house points. Nice. <laughs> so basically, these 50 house points, the teachers go mad because that's a lot of points. Um, but so, yeah, so another one from, a, I love children's questions. They're so cute and I think they're important to answer. Declan from Oxford Grove would like to know if you could play for any team in the world, which would you choose and why? Oh, good question. I think, <laughs> I think everyone wants to play for Real Madrid just because it's, I've, I've, trained at their training ground and we've had players like Modric and, and that watching our training sessions. It was with Bournemouth. Um, we went on a little training camp and just the facilities were incredible. Um, and Real Madrid, it's one of the biggest clubs in the world and hot weather most of the time over there. And, um, you know, Real Madrid win most of the games and uh, I think you want to win. So, yeah, Real Madrid, um, the stadium's incredible as well. We went to watch a game there. Just the atmosphere is amazing. So, Real Madrid. Top man. Excellent. And we'll just do one or two more. Um, so, let's have a look here. So, thanks for Oxford Grover who's been asking their questions. Thanks for the boys. Um, have I got any more? There's some on all the different streams. Um, yeah, the, the James Aimer, is, uh, because it's important, because I think it's sharing two seconds. It's the last one. It's this one, this biggest one again. Uh, we hear that winning isn't important, but then to set a child's mindset to be the best, how do we differ that message? That's a tough one. We hear that winning is, isn't is important, but then to set a child's mindset to be the best, how do we differ the message? So winning I is think, important. Yeah, it's, it's very important. I mean, you want to win. You don't want to... We used to win games 21-0 in our Sunday league Sunday league matches and you just feel for the other team looking back now you don't want to be on the end of a 21-0 defeat you want to you want to be winning it's important for self-confidence uh, belief motivation to go into the next game um just encourage your kids to win but at the end of the day if they come off the field or uh, whatever sport they're playing and they lose just say look you've done amazing work hard you worked hard um next week we'll win so that's what it's all about. It's all about learning from losing and always looking to the positive side of defeat. But I always tell my kids, you you, you, sh you should want to win everything you do, whether it be a spelling competition, whether it be you know playing sport, or whether it be drawing a picture. I have art competitions with my kids, and when I win and when the wife picks me as a winner, I always celebrate in front of them. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. And just to just to pick up on that, Mark, as well, is is we hear that winning isn't important now my kind of positive slant on that if somebody said is who are you hearing that from it, it, my 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 mindset would be to question them and, and and kind of say well why isn't winning important life's about winning you go to work to win you go to work to provide a, a family income for your family to win to 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 get the the means for a home life we hear that winning isn't important but then it sets the child's mindset to be the best well, we hear that winning isn't important, but then to set a child's mindset to be the best. So basically, as a parent, is what is winning to you and your child? Maybe you could ask that question. So what is winning to you and your child as well, Mark? Winning to me and my child is if we've, if we've gone, say, to play football and they have improved from the last time we played football, that's winning in my eyes because Brilliant. they've shown improvement. They've shown development. Developing as a child is the most important thing. It's not, yeah, it's, it's frustrating when you lose 2 3 nil, whatever it is. But if you see your child as an individual improving, um, smiling more, whether it be, you know, learning more, developing, um, 
working hard. It could be anything. It could be across the board. As long as they're developing and they're showing a good attitude towards everything they do, then that's the main thing. And that says to me that, you know, my child's winning and, you know, that that's everything to me. Thanks, Cuz. That's awesome. That's absolutely brilliant. Now, I hope that has been helpful for everybody out there. I've took enough of time of Mark's. I've gone over time, but I've only done that because he's my cousin and I'm being cheeky. So it's nice to get... Now, Mark, is there anything you've got to say before we wrap up? And I just want to say thanks so much from the bottom of my heart. You've been tremendous today. Absolutely brilliant. No, it's, it's been a pleasure and, uh, you know, thanks for everyone that listened. Um, I hope it's inspired a few people. I think uh, it's really important for the kids just to keep smiling, love life, uh, be the best version of themselves. And like we said earlier, um, just for us as parents, we've just got to support them in everything they do. That's the one. That's the one. Now, just to wrap up, I want to say thanks, Mark. And I'm going to put my podcast stream on. And I'm just going to stay behind and answer any questions that our children might have in class because I'm going to spend a little bit more time with them. I want to say thanks to you. Send all my love to the family and uh, hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. And uh, please leave your comments below. We'll answer them uh, back after this. If you watch this video back tonight with a coffee after work, great. Cuz, you're awesome. I hope you continue to make progress at QPR. I hope you manage to win the championship with QPR. And once this COVID's over, score loads of goals, cuz. Good luck, bud. Really appreciate that, cuz. Take care. Thanks for having me. Fund a greatness. Engage. Inspire. Motivate. And empower millions of children every day. Supporting you, the adult, to unlock your child's full potential so that they can achieve greatness at home, school, and in life. Your child can achieve greatness. What is greatness? What is your child's full potential? There's only one way to find out. It's okay to not follow the crowd. It's okay to be different. Who cares what others think? You only have one life. Live it. Do what others refuse to do. Making a positive difference to children's lives every day. Fund a greatness, engage, inspire, motivate, and the fantastic podcast. And thanks everybody for watching this live show. It really means the world to myself. Thank you so much. Um, please, if you've got any questions to ask about your child's development, your child's progress in school at home, if any of our schools are still on board um, and you want to play one or two activities live with me now. In, in live from Funder, then ask me any questions below um, and I'm here to answer them. So, but thanks everybody for, for tuning in. Uh, I missed some questions, uh, but pretty much please share this live video. Please share it with the world because we want to help you unlock your child's full potential and achieve greatness. So is there any questions before I finish up here? Uh, I just want to say thank you and thank you to everybody. But is there any any questions that you might have before we uh, wrap up? Is there any questions? Because it's been absolutely fantastic. So thanks to my cousin, Mark Pugh. Um, by the way, next week's show, we've got a very, very special guest. I can't name who he is. He plays for Burnley FC. He's a striker. He's a very good player. He's got long hair and he's from Burnley. He lives in Burnley and he's a very, very good friend of mine, and he will be tuning in next Thursday as well for a similar show just like this. So pretty much uh, keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out because I'm aiming to get a really good striker who's also worked from the bottom all the way to the top, providing helpful information and teaching points just like this. I'm also aiming to get Tyson Fury on the show. Tyson Fury, the greatest boxer in the world, the heavyweight champion, inbox him, Instagram him and say, get on the Funder Greatness show. Hashtag Funder Greatness. Come on, Tyson, for our schools, for our children, for all the children out there and the UK to help our mental health, our growth mindset and help us unlock our full potential and become the greatest thing in the world. We can do it. Is there any questions before we go? Uh, let me just check if I've missed any any 
questions here. Uh, hi to Tracy, who are doing deliveries. Um, I were expecting lots and lots and lots and lots of questions. But if there is any more questions, then please let me know. And I hope you've liked the show and I'll re reply back. So thank you so much. And today we had Mark Pugh on the show. Uh, next week, we've got another famous person on the show. So uh, I'll see you soon.